up everyone, Retro Rewind here, and yes, it's a VR, VR time, and Bodgy Retro, it's a VR to you, I, I watched this video a few weeks ago and I keep meaning to get in the games room, sit down, have a chat to the camera about why we collect, pretty much that's what it is, so I've sat and watched uh, two at UK's video, brilliant, uh, Eddie, Model Core, watched his, um, Tony, is it Hyper Street Fighter 2 or something? I never get his name right. And uh, Ed, the loveliest man on uh, Retro Ed, the loveliest man on YouTube. Um, and uh, Retro Red Steve. So many people are doing the VR. I keep meaning to do it and I keep commenting on people's and they've all been brilliant and we're all talking about why we collect. So obviously, what do you retro put it out there and ask the question? It's not been towed. It's actually strawberry laces cider. I picked up one in the shop the other day. I thought I'll have a try of that. It's quite nice. So, why do we collect? Um, like Eddie said, we're addicted. We are. We're addicted. We all got this addiction in our lives to something. And us collectors, as in said room, we are so addicted. We can't help but buy. It's crazy. We just. I don't know. We just get a a clause into things and we just keep buying i know for me um the question is how it all started for me growing up as um, a family of three of us so a brother and a sister older sister younger brother middle child syndrome that's correct uh look at me look at me um yeah um times are hard you know you get the game at christmas and birthdays and i had to share things with my brother and stuff like that um it's it's, but now we're adults and we want the stuff we had as children we didn't have as children or we're buying the stuff back as we had as children i know for me once i bought this uh, new house with my uh, missus or mrs retro excuse me mrs retro rewind should i call her or jojo um this room actually was a shall we say i had two bikes up there I had a little gym set up in one corner and I had a little CRTV um, with a couple of, and I bought a couple of consoles and that I was happy, that's all I wanted. And that for a couple of games, one a couple of games on the shelf. And then I won a Mass System 2 with 10 games on a raffle and that kind of set things going. And I've always, always remember the Mass System, a child of console, I always remember getting games for it and I always thought it would be cool. So then boxes all lined up. The same when I had the Mega Drive. I used to think the same thing. But always moved from console to console. And never really kept hope. Could sell one to get the next one. And it's something that's driven me. When I started collecting, the buzz, the absolute buzz of... I never used CX, funny enough, I didn't. I used to... The other game shop. We had a game shop in Lincoln I used to go to regularly. Uh, I say regularly. Every month, every payday, I used to go in there. Because I didn't start off as a collector. I started off as a gamer. I wanted to collect games. I just wanted to play games. I never played as a kid. So I used to go in. So with them set up and my consoles, I had a few consoles set up. What I do every payday, I'd go in there. I would pick up um, loose cards because I realised when I was looking at the games, box games and loose cards, loose cards were a lot cheaper. So for one box game, I could get two loose cards. So I'd pick up a Mass System game, a NES game. Because uh, like NES, I never had as a child. So I bought one so I could... You know, see what I was missing out on. So I buy loose cards to play, you know, SNES as well, N64, that kind of thing. And um cheers people, good health. And then it, it just I don't know what took over. It just I think I had a little corner where I started putting some games in the shelving, uh, you know, put them there and it got bigger, got bigger. <clears throat> and then I was like I'm going to collect a few games for um, each console I own. So I'm like, oh, I really like a box console. So, you, you know, I've got the loose ones. So I get the box consoles. And then you start putting games next to them. Um, and those, you know, pick up little bits of bits and bobs. And, yeah, it's, it's addictive. It really is. And I'll tell you what also is um, I started going on YouTube, looking at people's YouTube channels. Looking at what the boy, I remember watching two is uh, for my system collection when I started when I started out collecting. I was like, wow, I'd never own a, I'd never own a full set. 
I'd never own a full set. And yeah, it's crazy. Um, and like Rodgy said, some of these games are going for stupid money. And I have bought some stupid money ones. Um, but like I said, I've never left myself in debt doing it. And that's one thing is really important to do when you collect a game. Like I said, you get addicted. You can really, you know, that addiction of buying. Like for me, it's like when you buy a game and it turns up and you undo it. And it's like, oh, yes, I finally got this game. And then you stick it on the shelf and then you kind of, you're up there and you kind of come back down. It's, it's. You know, I guess it's a bit like drugs, but I wouldn't know. I've never taken them. But just anything, really. This room has just blown up. My missus says I have an addictive personality because I have spoken about selling up before. I thought, oh, I'm just going to sell up. She was like, don't sell up because if you do, you just buy it all back again. That is what you're like. That is what who you are. And I think it's the same with a lot of us who are um, collectors in any form, figures, games you know vhs tapes which funny enough i have a wall of vhs tapes i bought i got a few out of the attic when i was um going through my stuff and i thought they looked good on there then i got a couple of more and then bought a couple more man this is like don't start collecting vhs tapes you've got enough stuff in this room of getting your games so it, it's it's like what you said you just i think you just you're a collector. I think if you're a collector, you you will keep buying no matter what. I used to, I, I like to say, I started off trying to be a gamer. I think I'm more of a collector. And like Roger said, um, play your games in 2024. Was it play more in 24? I think he said. And it's, it is. That is my motto this year. I've been really trying to play more games in this room um, this year. And I think I have played more, more in this room. And one of the things I did tell myself was when I was buying all these games... There's everyone, like you get people who go, oh, they're just selling shelf doing nothing. My my point of the YouTube channel, I started the YouTube channel was when I got my room quite big, some like said to me, you need to show people, show your room on YouTube. So I started YouTube and I started doing the um, 8-Bit Boy UK, Ollie, his, um, I found his mass system challenge on YouTube. So I started to film myself doing the challenges like they're doing, put on, so I started putting that and then obviously I started to choose the 10-minute teaser. And what I'm doing is playing through all my Mass System games. Because I want to I wanna play every game in this room. So I'm going to play for all my Mass System games. I started my Sunday um, Hit Squad. I'm playing for all my Hit Squad games. And then once I've done them, I'm going to play for the rest of my Amstrad games. I started Thursday Throwback. Our Thursday Throwback was um, a way of getting me in on a Thursday night. And literally just pull it, pulling any game off the shelves. There's plenty in here. And just sticking them on a plane so it could be a Mega Drive, N64, SNES, Atari, just you know, any other game. And, and I haven't done that in a while, I need to get back on that. So, um, I don't know, like Eddie, um, and Tootie both, uh, you know, touch on it about too many people on YouTube for fame and fortune. They're trying to get and they're, they'll follow the trends and buying. Like at the minute, all I've seen at the minute spread over YouTube is Xbox, everyone's buying Xbox at the minute, and I've seen people's channels. Who were retro buying retro and now not buying Mega Drive and SNES games? They're buying Xbox all the time, just following the trend, and that's something I've kept away from. I buy for what I want to buy. I, I'm buying back my childhood. This is the, this is this room is my childhood. I've missed out on, or I'm missing that I had, and I'm getting back in. So yeah, it's something I, I wanted, and I think Eddie said it the same thing, and I'm Roger. And, um, you know, I think Steve was touching on it as well, where you you come in the room and you see everything in here. It's just nice to see it. I, I found myself coming in this room and just sitting in here sometimes, just having a look around, picking games off the shelves and looking at them, just the box art and looking around what I've got. I, I sometimes I'm like, why? why? Why have I got all this stuff? What have I done? Why did I get all this? Addiction. It's got to be addiction. Maybe I should just get rid of it but i love coming in here and seeing it um it's something about sitting and playing games and having all the games around you it's just it's brilliant i've tried everything to stop me collecting apart from not buying stuff obviously one of the things i i, I thought would stop me is i uh, built a arcade for a raspberry pi it's over there built an arcade i thought if i have an arcade with all the games on it I, I won't buy I won't buy games anymore because I can just play them on there. And then I was like, nah, it's not the same playing on the arcade. So I got Everdrives. 
I've got ever drives for, I think I've gone for all of them, yeah, all of my systems apart from Atari. I've got them, I've got them on all of them. I thought, I'd get them. I've got all the games I want to play. I won't buy any more. And I did. I kept buying. I still keep buying. Um, I've now finished the mass system. I don't think I'll be buying any more games. Apart from one more, just to get the manual out of it. And then I can put it in one of my classics there. Master of Darkness, I need the manual for the for it. And that game is just at the minute. And I only want it for the manual. Addiction. You know, I can't just not have it on the shelf without the manual. Because it's not complete to me. And like um, what you were saying, it's like selling up. Is it worthwhile selling up? I have I have thought about it a couple of times. I know two is um, touched on it where he said, if you're getting too much for you, just box it up and put it away. You'll regret selling it. And I've, I've, I've spoken to a few people who have sold up and regretted it and bought it all back again. And I think that's what it is. I have trimmed down in here. I have taken, sold a couple of box consoles uh, so loads of my duplicate uh, Master System games for variants I've sold on. I have cut down a bit, but then I thought that'd be cool. But all I did was buy other stuff in. Um, one thing I said when I started the YouTube channel is definitely I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna follow any trends. I filmed for me. I filmed what I want to see. I wanted to see on YouTube. I want to see lots of retro. I want to, I want to see old school games, consoles, the old. Um, but the, I couldn't see that much on there. So that's one of the reasons why I film all my old school consoles, like the Mass System, obviously. Uh, Snares, Mega Drive. But, you know, so I like to film them. I put them out, put them on YouTube because I want people to see them. And also, I'm building a vlog of my life for YouTube. It's going to be on there. Hopefully, it's on there when my daughter grows up. She'll be able to watch videos of me being an idiot, playing games in here and spending lots of money. And... Like watching people's YouTube um, pickups, they're deadly because you you see what they get, what they bought, and then you straight on eBay go look at oh yeah, fancy that, I'll get that. Yeah, that's bad. That's an that's that's the addiction collector in you, isn't it? Seeing what other people got and then you want to get them. Um, like for me, my retro is not CD based. Anything before CD, I stopped at N sixty four. I just collect cartridge only, and obviously cassette tapes for the. Amstrad, so that is me. That is all I collect. Is is that is my retro? Um, I'm trying to think what um Eddie was uh, Eddie. I should say what you were saying. It was on about fake games. I, yeah, that scares me. Of picking up a game that's fake. Is the fake games in here? There could be. I don't know. I got more wiser as I got more into collecting because you start to learn from other people what, um, uh, what to look out for and stuff like that with fake stuff like opening cartridges and making sure there's the real chips inside that kind of thing and that comes with the help of retro community the people in the community um are outstanding they really are i've got to say uh, from starting my youtube channel i've met quite a few people now who are classes my friends oh i've made some friends oh friends yeah so um yeah, it's it's been good. I think YouTube's really brought, you know, you 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 know the circle of people you surround around you, what you're into, and I've got to find the retro community. Uh, they're pretty solid. There's some really cool people in it, and it's been really good to meet up with them. I've I've met up with people I know through the YouTube channel. I met up for um, ex expos and or just for a coffee and stuff like. That. It's been great meeting people. I think that's the best thing about YouTube. What it's done for me is um connecting with people with uh similarities addiction you know we could all meet up at a uh an aa meeting technically aren't we really for games but um like what you said would you still be collecting in 10 years 10 years time will i still be collecting in 10 years well i still have all, all this in 10 years um I've, i collect all my back to the future stuff which is all up behind the tv i've got a huge lego collection over there and then behind me, I've got all my retro games. And then the window, box window I boxed out is all my uh, CDs, books and um, VHS and Laserdiscs. They're up there. Will, will I still have all this? Will I sell it all on? I don't know. I, I can't seem to... I really struggle to sell anything. No matter if it's just a, a cheap game that's worth a tenner. I've got three copies of. I've, I struggle to sell anything. Um... 
I've got a box, I'm looking down here now, I've got a box console of uh, Super Nintendo and, and I'm selling it and I wouldn't have sold it. The only reason I'm selling it to a friend is because he used to own it as a kid and he would, and he, he said, oh, I really want that in my collection. So I said, tell you what, I'll sell you, I'll do you a good deal. The stupid money at the minute, so I've done it in a good deal. And I'm quite happy that to go sit in his room like I've got with my stuff. But 10 years, it's a long time to think, will I still be collecting? I don't know. I have slowed right down. I know Eddie said himself, he's slowed right down with pickups. I remember back in the day doing YouTube where I was doing a pickup every single month. When I was going for the Masters and full set, I was, I was some, some months I was picking up, I don't know, 40 games. It was crazy. I was well, like, tunnel vision. I was zoned in. Um, but now I've been filming pickups every two months and they're getting less. I'm not, I'm not picking as much up. Like Eddie said, you know, I think you start, unlike Rogie, Rogie, I don't think he's got a limit to where he's going to stop. I think he wants every full set of every console. I think that's what he is. That's what he's going for. He doesn't need a massive, he needs a massive warehouse to put it all. But me, I've really slowed down. My focus of um, collecting for me now is, obviously, I finished with my system. Uh, Mega Drive, I might pick up a couple of shoot, shoot em ups. I'm really getting into some shoot em ups on the Mega Drive. That's why I've been playing a load of them on the EverDrive and filming that. I've been really enjoying that. So, like I say, I think, you know, um, I'll touch back on that in a minute. Um, I'm going. I'm trying to go for a full set on the Hit Squad for the Amstrad, which is really hard because obviously cassette tapes from back in the day, the 80s are really hard to get hold of and some of the silly money. So I'm slowly picking them up. I'm not rushing out to buy anything now. Um, Super Nintendo, I'm still picking up the odd game. If I find, I'm trying to obviously get all my loose cards box. So just little missions like that. I'm just, I've really slowed down. I'm not rushing anymore. Um, if anything, you know, I see, I think, oh, I'll have that. But I have a list of games on my phone that I really want from my childhood. So I'm saving up for that. If I ever spot them, I'll get them. I'm not rushing because they are dear old ones. They would be, wouldn't they? Um, so like I said, when I was switching back on the um, Mega Drive, obviously YouTube for me, like um, Tui was saying, with YouTube, there's so many people filming for filming, filming for trends, filming for to be in the gang, you know, oh, I'm part of this, I'm part of that, we're filming for that, you know, buying games to film just to keep up with everyone. And I think for me, YouTube makes me come in here and play games because I'm a real big movie fan and I love to watch movies all the time. So sometimes when I want to come in a game, I actually choose a film over gaming. Even though I've seen the film 50 times, it's weird. So me to come in and film me Tuesdays or my uh, shoot em ups on the Mega Drive or, you know, Amstrad or whatever, first throwbacks, any of all them. I think what if I if I push myself to go, oh, if I film it to get it on YouTube, it makes me come in and play it. It it does. It really works like it does doing that. So YouTube for me makes me a gamer rather than just a collector, which pretty much I am, obviously. And I try to prove to myself I'm a gamer. And uh, yeah, so YouTube for me is just that, really. It's, it's just the outlet of, of, it makes me come in here and play a game. If if I get if I get more than one view on a video, then I've reached out to someone and showed them some old game that maybe they've never seen before. So I think hopefully I've touched on uh, what everyone else has said. It's always nice to hear everyone's opinions and how they feel about collecting retro and why they collect also for collect anything to be fair because i know for me this room looks nothing like what i wanted it to look like when i bought the house i actually wanted this room to be cinema posters on the wall film posters i've got i literally have only got two on the wall i've got back to the future and ready player one that's the only two posters of movies got on the wall i expected to have uh, a few games like these retro games a few games here and there um, I've got in my attic all old um, toys from my childhood. I thought I would pick up more um, toys and have different toys set out. I thought I'd have a Lego section, which I have got a Lego section there, but a more advanced Lego section. I thought I'd have some Star Wars figures set up, Millennium Falcon, and the 
the attack walker and stuff like that. I thought I thought this room would be a mix of movies. I'd have all my DVDs in here. I haven't got one to land in. I thought I'd have a, a real mix of 80s in that. I want this to be an 80s and 90s uh, mix room of everything from that era. Just of everything, really, you know. But um, I think gaming took over. I think gaming addiction won that round, unfortunately. But the way I, the room is now, I'm, I'm happy with it. I've got everything I need. Like I said, if I want to pick up any more, I can. There's no pressure. I feel no pressure whatsoever now to buy anything. Um, especially now the full set's done. But like I said, yeah, there can be some pressure to keep buying. Like it's some I don't think I don't think I've gone a month without buying a game since I started. No. I don't think I have. I don't think I've gone a month. That's bad when you think about it. That's an addiction. I wonder if I can go a month without buying. December. I'm gonna go December this year. I'm gonna go December. I'm picking December that I'm not allowed to buy any games. There you go. That's it. Done. So, yeah. I don't think I answered Roger's question with the 10 years. We'll see myself in 10 years still collecting. I don't think I'll be buying anything in 10 years. I think I'll have everything I want in 10 years' time. Because that's quite a long time to buy everything you need. So, I think in 10 years, I don't think I'll be collecting. I think I'll still be just sat in here with my daughter. She'll be older, playing old video games. I think that's what I want. Not more games. Just play what I've got in here. So in 10 years, I don't think I will be collecting. But in 10 years, I don't think I would have sold up. I think this will still be here in 10 years. I really do think it will be. Yeah. So we'll end it on that one. Yeah. Done. So cheers to everyone who watched. Good help. And I will see you on another video. And um, if you haven't, please, I'm sure you have. Everyone watches their channel. If you haven't, please check out all the channels I just mentioned. Go watch all their VRs. Because it's quite interesting to, I know we're all in the same boat, but it's quite interesting to hear everyone's views and topics, how they feel about, you know, all this. And they've been really good. So, yeah, go check them out. Remember, I'll try and um, put links to their uh, videos in my thing, but you probably already know them. We're all the same people, aren't we? Those old retroers. But, yeah, on that one, thanks very much for watching and uh, I hope everyone's okay. And take care of yourselves. Thank you.